So today, we are going to discuss about the different bones consisting the frog skeleton. Let us start with the skull. We have here the dorsal view of the skull. So first, we have the premaxillary bones located over here, which are the two small holes on top. Then at the sides, we have the maxillary bones. And then, over here, you will see triangular shaped bones. This is what you call the nasal bones. And at the center, we have this phenetmoid bone. And then, this flat bone running from here to here, we have the frontoparietal bone. And it is joined by the visible line over here, which you call the median dorsal suture. Next, we have the squamosal, which can be seen on both sides. It is a thin bone on right and left. So these are the squamosal bones. These are held by the two large bones over here, which you call prootic. And then, over here you will see hammer-shaped bones. This is what you call the quadratojugal bones. And then over here you will see a small hole where the spinal cord is connected. This is what you call the foramen magnum. And then these two small circular bones are what you call the occipital condyle. So that's it for the bones on the skull in the dorsal view. Let us now start with the ventral view of the skull. So again, we have over here the premaxillary bones. Attached to the premaxillary bones are the premaxillary teeth, which are the very small fine structures located over here. And then next, we have the maxillary bones. And again, we have what, what you call, call the maxillary teeth. Get it over here. And then next, on the ventral view, you're able to see the vomer. Which are over here. And attached to it, we have the vomerin teeth. Next, we have the tooth-like structure located on both sides over here and here these are what you call the palatine next we have the most prominent bone in the ventral view this is what you call the parasphenoid and then next you'll see two large holes over here and here these are what you call the eye socket or orbit, which supports the eye. And then next, we have here uh, the continuation, which protects the tympanic membrane. We have what you call the pterygoid. This one is the pterygoid. And then next, we have over here the quadratojugal, which is also visible in the dorsal view. Lastly, we have over here the occipital condyle, which are very near to the foramen magnum. So that's it for the ventral view of the frog's skull. Let us now move to the lower jaw of the frog. So this is the lower jaw of the frog in the dorsal view. So first, we have here on top the mentomechalian bone. And then running through the sides, we have the dentary. And then over here you will see a slight bulge 
which is formed on both sides. This is what you call the angular splenial bone. So that's it for the lower jaw of the frog. Next, we have the hyoid apparatus of the frog. So we have here the hyoid apparatus and the ventral view. So first, we have over here on top, we have the anterior cornu, which are very slender if you will see. And then next, we have on both sides, this one, the one that forms the bulge, and this one, these are what you call the alary process. And then next, at the middle, we have what you call the body of the hyoid bone. And then, this one, if you will see, they were very small. These are what you call the posterior cornu. And then, these extensions at the bottom, these are the thyroid process. So that's it for the hyoid bone of the frog. Let us now move on to the pectoral girdle of the frog. So in the pectoral girdle, you will see two large prominent bones located over here. These are what you call the suprascapula. These are held by these bones, which you call the scapula. And then over here, this is what you call the coracoid, which is connected to the scapula of the pectoral girdle. So the glenoid fossa is attached to the coracoid. So the glenoid fossa is an opening where the humerus is attached. And then over here, you will see a straight bone running from here to here. This is what you call the clavicle. So there is a small space over here formed by the clavicle and the coracoid. This is what you call the fenestra. And then at the center, this is what you call the epicoracoid, which holds the two coracoids. And then on top, this is what you call the episternum, which is held by another, by an another bone called omosternum. And at the bottom, this is what you call the cephisternum, held by the bone over here, which you call the mesosternum. So we have two conditions over here because since these bones, the episternum and the cephisternum can be interchanged. Just remember that the, if the clavicle is located on top, the upper one is the episternum. While if the coracoid comes first, this will be the cephisternum. So that makes up the pectoral girdle of the frog. Let's now move on to the vertebral column of the frog. So we have the first vertebra which we call the atlas, which is on top. And then the second to the eighth vertebra, these are what you call the typical vertebrae. And then the ninth vertebra, this is what you call the sacral vertebra. Then over here, which makes up the tail of the frog, this is what you call the urostyle. And then these structures on the sides, these are what you call the transverse process. And then you will see a straight line Running to the bottom, this is what you call the neural spine. And at the sides of the neural spine, 
These are small bulges that are very visible. These are what you call the post zygapophysis. So that makes up the vertebral column of the frog. Let us now move on to the pelvic girdle of the frog. So this makes up the pelvic girdle of the frog. If you will break this bone into two, you will arrive on half of this girdle, which we call the innominate bone. So this long bone, this is what you call the ilium. And then this hole, this opening, this is what you call the acetabulum. It is where the femur is attached. And then you will see bulges, a curve over here. The one with the larger curve is called the ischium. The one with the smaller one is what you call the pubis. So this curve is what you call the ischak symphysis. Well, the one located over here is the pubic symphysis. So that makes up the pelvic girdle of the frog. Let us now go through the different types of vertebra. Starting off with the atlas, which is the first vertebra. You will see a bulge over here. This is what you call the neural spine. And then you will see two horn-like structures, which you call the anterior concavities. So at the middle, this is what you call the neural canal. And then over here, these are the post zygapophysis. And at the bottom, this is what you call the centrum. So that makes up the atlas. Next we have the sacral vertebra. So over here, these are what you call the prezygapophysis. And then at the middle, this is the neural canal, which is very small. And then these two bones which extends from right and left. These are what you call the transverse process. And then at the bottom, this is what you call the centrum. So that's the sacral vertebra. Let us now have the tenth vertebra, which is the tail of the frog or the urostyle. So at the middle, You'll see here the neural canal, this one. And then, this bone, which extends upright over here, we have the keel. And then, these two bones, these are what you call the foramen this one at the bottom and then the foramen are joined by the centrum so that makes up the urostyle let us now move on to the forelimb of the frog so we have here the head of the humerus which makes up the arm of the frog so this one is the humerus you will see a slight bulge over here. This is what you call the deltoid ridge. We have over here what you call the radio ulna. It is joined by the condyle. We have here on the radio ulna the longitudinal groove at the middle of the radius and the ulna. Then we have here connected to the thumb of the frog 
the Rajale. And then at the middle, we have the Centrale. While on the other side, we have the Ulnare. These are what you call the ordinary carpals. Then over here, we have the metacarpals. And at the outermost, we have here the phalanges or the fingers of the frog. So that makes up the forelimb. Let us now proceed to the hind limb of the frog. They are connected to the pelvic girdle. So these are the hind limbs. So over here, we have the head of the femur. And then this long bone is what you call the femur. And then over here, we have the tibiofibula. Then we have the tarsals. We have the calcaneum and astragalus. So connected to the astragalus, we have the extra toe which we call the calcar. And these are the ordinary tarsals. Over here, we have the metatarsals. And then over here, we have the phalanges or the toe of the frog. So that's the hind limb of the frog. To sum up, let's review the entire skeletal system of the frog. So again, we have the premaxillary bones over here. And at the sides, you will have the maxillary bones. At the middle, you'll have the sphenatmoid. And then these two large holes will be the orbit or the eye socket. And then this flat bone over here is what you call the frontoparietal. We have here the phalanges, the metacarpals, the ordinary carpals, the radio ulna, and then the humerus. And then over here we have the pectoral girdle. These two large bones are the suprascapula. Then we have the vertebral column. These are the typical vertebrae. Then this one is the sacral vertebrae. And then the last vertebra is the urostyle, which makes up the tail of the frog. Then these two long bones over here makes up the pelvic girdle. We have here the ilium. Then we have the ischium. The curve over here. And then the hind limbs. We have the femur. And then the tibiofibula. And then the calcaneum. Then astragalus at the bottom. This makes up the tarsals. And then this one are the metatarsals. And then this one is the extra toe which we call the calcar. And then at the outermost we have the phalanges or the toes of the frog. So again, thank you for listening and this is the skeletal system of the frog.